Our Father God, how amazing and blessed we are here today to celebrate this class, Alabama Police Academy 175. Lord, you are worthy to be praised, and we thank you abundantly for the accomplishment and expansion of our brothers and sisters. Also, with the commitment and aid and daily devotion from the instructors and staff who prompt us to have honesty, integrity, and self-discipline. Oh, merciful God, we are so grateful for this chance to honor your power, to show compassion and a sense of urgency. When we return to our prospective department, let us not forget to pray our strength, in which state, dear God, please give me strength when I am weak, love when I feel forsaken, courage when I am afraid, wisdom when I feel foolish, comfort when I am alone, hope when I feel rejected, and peace when I am in turmoil. We ask that you allow us to protect the defenseless and helpless people that we may encounter and endure in our neighborhoods and communities. Secretary Hal Taylor and his entire command staff for their strong support of law enforcement officers uh, for training throughout the state of Alabama. Uh, also through the support of uh, uh, training officials. Uh, we also want to acknowledge and thank APOST Executive Secretary Chief Alan Benefield 
and the entire APOS Commission for their strong support for the governing of law enforcement officers' training within the great state of Alabama. Uh, I would also like to thank Dr. Mitchell, uh, President Mitchell of the Wallace Community College here. Uh, he and his staff were unable to attend this morning because they had uh, another uh, Christmas event that they had to be uh, present for, but we thank them for allowing us to uh, use this facility. Uh, at this time, I would like to take just a moment and recognize some of our special guests who are in attendance, uh, as well as members of the training staff that are here on stage with us. Uh, to my right, behind me, uh, the very end, our guest speaker, uh, retired Colonel, uh, current Mayor, uh, retired uh, Leo Colonel, uh, DPS, uh, current Mayor of Monroeville, uh, the city of Monroeville, Alabama. Uh, Charles Andrews. Uh, to his left, we have retired uh, Colonel Charles Ward, uh, APOST representative, also current uh, Ozark Police Department Chief. Uh, to his left, we have uh, Aaliyah, Chief of Training and Professional Development, Wayne Mackey. Uh, to his left, we have uh, uh, Chief Tommy Reese of the Attorney General's Office, Law Enforcement Coordinator. On the uh, Row behind them, far end, Sergeant William Frederick. He's the Aaliyah Training Center uh, Field Training Coordinator. To his left, we have Sergeant Chris King. He's the Aaliyah Training Center's Training Coordinator. To his left, we have uh, Corporal Brock Walton. He's the Aaliyah Training Center's Field Training Coordinator for the Dothan Troy area. Uh, sitting to him is uh, Senior Trooper uh, Melissa Catterton, Aaliyah Training Center Instructor. Corporal Jeremiah Headley, Aaliyah Training Center Corporal, Class Coordinator. And on the uh, very back, we have Senior Trooper Ranger Wright. Uh, he was the Assistant Class Coordinator and uh, kind of the one they had to answer to throughout this uh, training academy. Uh, in the audience, uh, if you look to your left, sitting up high, uh, to the rear, I have uh, Miss Lynette Williams, which is the Aaliyah Training Center's uh, Counts Technician. Uh, to the very rear, uh, that is uh, Aaliyah Training Center's uh, ASA2, Madeline Bearded, Bearded, and she was responsible for the processing and all the paperwork dealing with this, uh, this fine class. Uh, in addition to uh, those introductions, we want to recognize uh, any and all law enforcement, military personnel, uh, families as well, that have uh, taken time out of their busy schedule. I see a lot of uniforms out there. We really appreciate that, and the class uh, appreciates that as well for showing your support. So let's uh, give everybody a round of applause. <laughs> uh, at this time, I invite the class president, Letitia Saltwell, to come and deliver her graduation speech. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you to all family and friends for joining Class 175 on our graduation day. Thank you for your support along our journeys here. It did not go unnoticed and we truly appreciate you. I would like to start off by thanking the staff here, Academy Commander Captain King, Training Manager Sergeant King, and Sergeant at Arms Sergeant Lynn. To our class coordinator, Corporal Henley, we thank you for being a stern and purposeful leader. We will never forget our day one welcome party you threw us. <laughs> thank you for keeping us locked on. We will miss your dark humor, guidance, and keeping it real. Oh, and tiny bubbles, bigger bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> to our assistant coordinator, Senior Trooper Caddington, we thank you for your dedication to us, putting us first before yourself. Thank you for being there for us when we needed it the most, while still kicking us into gear when we started to get off track. We will never forget those late night study sessions and your never quit attitude. We will miss your cadence calling, especially Mama Mama, 
and humor. Poof! You were definitely the mother slash sister figure a lot of us needed. To our assistant coordinator, super uh, senior Trooper Wright, <laughs> we thank you for working with us directly and being our go-to. You were always there helping us get through things. Thank you for the bond that you created here with us along the way. We will never forget those late night talks in the common area after a long stressful day and the life advice and comfort that you gave us. We will miss when you walk past us, stop. Look at us with a funny smile and then walk along. We also would like to give a special thank you to Corporal Huatu for your heart for your perfect timing and making us laugh. Always staying motivated, and your positive attitude is contagious. Your unexpected visits always brought smiles to our faces. Thank you to all the training coordinators that were involved in our time here, sacrificing your time for the benefit of our <coughs> developments. As we began moving further into our lives, we saw fit to be a law enforcement officer. We quickly realized that we were not entering into a new chapter of our lives, but instead we picked up a book with blank pages. In that moment, what we knew before as our normal had now altered into something much larger than oneself. The power and opportunity to creating something good. The ability to promote change in the lives of our people the chance to share our knowledge and be leaders in our agencies, and the will to help build our communities. As we gather here now on 75, preparing our departure, we have already begun setting that solid foundation to build on, creating our new narrative, writing our book we have chosen. Everything we have done here has mentally, physically, and tactically prepared us Looking back at our time here, we have faced and overcame many obstacles and challenges for which I am truly grateful. If you can remember 175, we started here as individuals, looking only at our own self-development. We soon became aware that as law enforcement officers, we must stick together. We must hold ourselves accountable as individuals and now as a part of the thin blue line. We give an oath to be leaders, striving for the highest end. We had to reach within inside ourselves to fight those things, to become those leaders. Well, look at us now. 14 weeks, a short period of time to some, but a lifetime to us. Coming into an unknown place with unknown people, wondering what was going on in our heads to make this decision. We had many early mornings, intense cardio and endurance training, followed by fatigue, mental breakdowns, you name it. But then we started to bond as a class. We started to lean on one another, helped each other through the tears, missing our loved ones, and even pushed each other to not give up, even when sometimes we desperately wanted to. We kept giving it our all, countless hours of class, death by PowerPoint, Firearms, vanguard, alert, and tactical training, all demanding physically and emotionally. But we got through it, leaning on one another and staying strong. Because sometimes strong is all you can be. Weakness was not and never will be an option. Despite all the above, we found laughter and made memories that will last a lifetime. From duffel bags and the big right face into the pit. Getting down there with it, sleeping on top of our beds, lesson learned, the delicious food, and the lovely early morning air horns and whistles. But most importantly, the camaraderie. We have been through a lot together, 175. These memories we will cherish and remember forever. Just remember, the instructors gave us their all, and we gave our all in return. Now 175, it is time to take that relentless spirit and never quit attitude with us and to our agencies and our communities. 
what we have learned here, the tools given, have prepared us for the next chapter in our book. Understand that we are not perfect, and we will not get it right all the time, but stay locked on. Remember, it's never too late to go back to week one. Take a step back, assess yourself, look yourself in the mirror, and say you got this and can do better. 175, always hold yourselves to the highest standard. Ask for help, continue to learn, Strive to be the better version than yesterday. Never get complacent. I am so proud of every one of us, and it has been a pleasure leading you all 175. This is not a goodbye, but hello to my fellow brothers and sisters in arms. I love you all, and I wish you many blessings, peace, and overall success in your careers. May God be with you all. Thank you. Presentation of special awards given in class officers, squad leaders, and special individuals. Class officers are nominated and elected by the members of the class. Class officers are elected by the police academy session 175 are as follows. Class president, Letitia Salter, Delta Police Department. Secretary Treasurer, Lena Lagaz, Bear Creek Police Department. Sergeant at Arms, Christopher Phillips, Thomasville Police Department.
squad leaders are appointed by the class board members. Squad leaders for Alabama Leeds County, Section 175, are as follows. First squad leader, Benjamin Stanton, Madison County Sheriff's Office. Second squad leader, Justin Thompson, at Moore Police Department. Third squad leader, Derek Robinson, Bessemer Police Department. Squad leader, Brandon Pacebe, Dothan Police Department. Let's give these flash leaders a round of applause.
And finally, the Commander's Award. The final award presented as the Commander's Award is awarded uh, award to the recipient, determined by the training staff as well as the student body, to the student officer who exhibits exceptional leadership and achievement in all aspects of training and instruction while here at the Academy. This award demonstrates professional qualities and attributes expected and demanded of a student officer who becomes a law enforcement officer. It will be a great honor and privilege to award the Commander's Award to student officer Johnny James Fowler Coleman. <laughs> C is for carrot, 
And that is how people perceive you, what they think of you. I is for integrity. And to keep it simple is you honor your word. Your word is your bond. Mm -hmm. And attitude is how you get up every day. And how you address your, your, your family and your friends and, and the public when you go out. You see, if you go out and you all frowned up and everything, then that's how they're going to perceive you. They're going to perceive you that, that maybe he doesn't want to be here today. I'm not going to have a good encounter with him. So that's why you have to go back and, and look at the history of things. Now, when I came out to the academy, I was about 10 pounds heavy. I had a six pack, and I wore that uniform with pride. Well, y'all heard the days that I graduated from different places, so I'm not quite in that same shape. Instead of a six pack, I may have a two pack. <laughs> but the reason I go back and tell you this is because on one Saturday night, I encountered a person that made a traffic stop. And it was a little old lady. I mean, she, she couldn't have been much taller than this pony. And as I approached her, I tried to do it the way that I was talking in a professional manner and asked her for a driver's license and all this. And I mean, man, she just went off. Mm -hmm. And so it came down to the point where she was not cooperating. I told her, ma'am, you can't go back and prove who you are. You're going to have to prove that to the judge tomorrow, but you're going to jail. Well, I reached in to get her out of that car. On my left arm, she tried to bite a plug out of it. Good now, can you imagine? I'm 6'5, weighing about 235, and if I turn around and I let her have <laughs> what that would cause. And the reason I'm telling you what caused the incident because, like many of you, believe it or not, every place in here that you represent, I've been to the big ones and the small ones. But well, this was in a very small community. And when blue lights and stuff go out, everybody comes out. When I looked up, my whole patrol car was surrounded by people. And when I got her, I used some of my training techniques to get her to the car. I got to the back door and I kept telling the man, please get in the car. And she kept saying, man, please get in the car. Well, I looked across and there was a guy standing on the other side of that car. He was watching every move I made. So I finally got her in the car. And the most interesting thing about it was on the day of trial, she shows up. She's on a walk. She got a neck brace. No, she got an arm and a sling. So as we go through and we go into trial, the most important point from this is that when her witness came up and the district attorney approached her, he asked her, uh, asked that witness, he said, well, what did that trooper do? And he told her, he said, ma'am, will you please get in the car? He said, what did you do then? He kept asking her, ma'am, will you please get in the car? And see, the reason I tell you about this incident, because when you're out there working with the public, you are establishing what I call a deposit account. And the reason I say that is because of everything that you go out there and do that is good, there's going to come a day you're going to have to reach back into that deposit account. And that's where your character, your integrity, your attitude is going to come in. Because when it went to trial and the jury came out, they found her guilty unanimously. So you see, that's where your, your, your training and, and all of this goes back and come into place. You know, when I was with the uh, Department of Public Safety, we had a motto. I don't know if it's still the same now or not, but it's courtesy, service, and protection. And the reason I tell you that is I had an incident in Strong Ward knows about Enterprise and how they're traffic and get backed up there around the circle. I had an incident one day, there was a young lady there and she was from Troy, her car drove down. And everybody was passing by and it was kind of blocking traffic and it was really a hazard for her and everybody else. So I got out and this is where y'all's physical training gonna come in. <laughs> I pushed that car out the road and got into a service station. Well, to me, it was no big deal. But the next week when I came back in, my sergeant, Sergeant Glover, called me into his office and I said, oh my God, what did I do this time? But he pulled out a letter. And that letter was from a, that lady's father who lived in Troy, who was a doctor. And in that letter, he said, I don't know who that trooper was. I don't know where he came from. But 
he assisted and helped my daughter in the time of need. It said it was just like he was a long range. Nobody knew who he was or where he went, but we thank him for that. So, you know, that's when you go through and you talk about courtesy and, and protection. And, you know, as I go through and I, I look at this, I learned over my career, how do you go back and you measure your success? Well, I came to Monroe County as a young trooper back in the 80s, so I'm telling my age again. But anyway, <laughs> we had 14 fatalities in that county the first year I was there. The next year, we were down to three. And the reason I go back and tell you this story is because you can have an impact. And you have to go back out and you have to look at where you are working and what's going on. Yeah, I can go back and I can tell you now, I thank God for to go back and relate to this. Because when I took over Highway Patrol, I told all those troopers, I'm quite sure you're going to have your chief tell you the same thing. I told all those troopers, I don't count your success by how many traffic stops and how many, well, not traffic stops, but how many tickets you issue. So that's not the purpose of you being out here. What I count your success by is the number of uh, fatalities that happens in your territory, the number of incidents that happen in your territory, how you are visible in your territory. And when you get back to your city, you're going to run into some of the same things. And you're going to have to go back and analyze for yourself on your patrol where you need to be. And, you know, as I, I go back and I tell everybody, even with uh, my partners now, there's two things I believe in. Number one is responsibility. You need to know what your responsibilities are. And number two is accountability. Because someone is going to go and hold you accountable. Mm -hmm. So go out and do that job. And the other thing I want to tell you about, and people think that this is a new concept, it's called community oriented policing. In 1980, uh, when I first went through my assignment in Scandia County, I was doing community oriented policing then. Because my instructors told me, they said, when you get out there in your territory and you're working, don't be afraid to stop by one of those country stores and go up and buy a soldier and sit down on the porch in a rocking chair with those people and have a conversation. So you see, when you get out there and you get an opportunity to encounter people from the public, establish a rapport with them. You know, this is the thing that you will go back and you will be known for and you will be surprised as to the type of information and stuff they will come back and they will tell me. But you can't be afraid to establish that report. I know it feel good when it's hot in the summer and you're wearing that vest and you got that air conditioning going for a blast and the windows up. But every once in a while, you need to stop by one of the stores or stop by somebody's house and speak with them. They love them. That's community oriented policing. That's how you gain your support. You know, one of the things that I always tell, and I've told my officers, I've told my troopers, when you're dealing with the public, do it with dignity and respect. Mm -hmm. It don't matter who they are, how old they are, you know, sex, ethnicity, it don't matter. It's always, yes sir, no sir, yes ma'am, no ma'am. And to give you a great scenario, I told some of my officers there that worked in the city, and it's gotten down to the point because we go out and we do safety checkpoints. It's got to the points where when people pull up to check, safety checkpoints, that the little kids in there, because of the way that the officers approach them with dignity and respect and, and a positive attitude, they're the ones reaching over there, Daddy, Daddy, let me give him the insurance paper, let me give him the, <laughs> the, the, the driver's license and all this stuff. But it's because of dignity, dignity respect, and your positive attitude in dealing with the public. I had an old gentleman tell me one time when he first came on board, he said, you can get a lot more done with honey than you can pound. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And that is, that is so true. true. Mm -hmm. Because see, what you're going to find out, <laughs> y'all don't know if they did it, you or we went through the academy, but everybody was asked a question, they said, well, when you get out there on the road, are you going to ride by yourself? <laughs> and um, the answer was, oh yes, you will ride by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you will learn things by that. Because number one, you've got to learn you can't depend on nobody but yourself. Number two, you've got to learn how to de-escalate a situation. Now, I'm going to tell you something. 
just like with that little old lady I told you about, if I had gotten into a shouting match back and forth with her and started using the same language she was using, all that would have done that would have fit their crowd and would have escalated their situation. Mm -hmm. So as you go out and you endeavor upon this career, you know, please keep those in mind. And the other thing that I want to tell you about, <laughs> you know, is, and I had a young lieutenant come into my office when I was a lieutenant colonel, and I told him, I said, you know, we are actually in the customer service business. Mm -hmm. And he didn't quite grasp what yeah, I was telling him. He went to a conference and he came back and he said, now I understand what you say. Because when you have to realize when you're in public service, that public out there, they're the ones that pay you. They have expectations from you for that. And that's why whether you believe it or not, you are in the customer service business. And the last thing I want to leave you guys with is that when you get to your assignments, you're going to get issued a manual. Probably be anywhere from this thick to that thick. They're going to call it policy and procedure. And the reason they call it policy and procedure is somebody went out and did something. And that department either got sued for it or they got so many complaints about it that they had to come up with a standardized way for everybody to do everything. So in order for you to be successful, and I'm going to tell you now, in my career, I've been sent into a lot of places that have problems. The reason they have problems is because people were not following their own policy and procedure. So I encourage you to take that policy and procedure map. Know what is in it. Because it identifies what your responsibilities are. And it lets you know what you will be held accountable. So congratulations, 175. I can say this, if folks in, out in the street had heard what I heard today, first of all, they would not want to run for you because they know you're going to get it. <laughs> they definitely don't want to be shot at by you. <laughs> <laughs>
because I listened to a lot of stuff he said and I took heed to it. But I'm going to change up my encouraging words just a little bit because I think sometimes you need the sound of law. You heard him talk about community police, how you treat people, how you be out here on the road. And, we, and this is a great day for you. But, I, but I'm going to tell you the, the back side of law enforcement. I'm on the commission. Your, your class president talked about accountability. Your, your sheriffs, your chiefs, your directors don't hold you accountable. You should hold each other accountable. Because one thing I promise you standing before you today, the APOS Commission is going to hold you accountable. To be very professional, do your job right, always abide within the law. And the reason I'm telling y'all that, we are revoking and suspending law enforcement certification at a long rate right now. We are, we're supposed to meet about once a quarter. We are meeting almost monthly revoking and suspending law enforcement certification. We, we got scheduled to meet sometime in this, but we got a whole bunch more for doing bonehead things out here when you're out here doing your job law enforcement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Guard your conduct on duty and off duty. You are always a police officer where you all work. You represent that badge. As y'all got dressed today, you made sure you didn't have a lint on your uniform, you made sure everything was pressed, your badge is shining. Whether it's 25 years from now, 40 years from now, that badge should be just as shining as it is today. Do not tarnish it. When you do them bonehead decisions, it reflects badly on all law enforcement. Now, I'm telling you that because I'm going to be able to sit across the table one day and say, I told you. Because I have been in graduation just like today, only to have people sit across the table from us and we revoke their certification where they would never be in law enforcement ever again. Always think about it every single day. Go to work with a happy attitude. Know why you out there, you are a servant of the public. That badge that Joe Foreman gave you, what they send, we are instilling trust in you to go out and force the laws of the land. Don't ever forget that, okay? I will now, at this time, minister the oath of law. Please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I name. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Do solemnly swear or affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Alabama. And the Constitution of the State of Alabama. So long I continue a citizen thereof. So long I continue a citizen thereof. That I will faithfully and honestly discharge the duties. That I will faithfully and honestly discharge the duties. Upon the office on which I'm about to enter. Upon the office of which I'm about to enter. To the best of my ability. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations.
Montel, Drake, Alabama and Police Department. Johnny James Fowler, Coleman County Sheriff's Office. Celesta Hill, Admiral Police Department. County Sheriff's Office. Jonathan Millender, you follow police department. Perez Michonne Nance, Madison County Sheriff's Office.
Jerry, Tyler, Phil, y'all, Dover Police Department. Alexander, Jacob, Quick, Coleman County Sheriff's Office. John Tristan Reeves, Admiral Police Department. Lisa O'Shaw Salter, Dover Police Department. Sean Spencer, Central Mount Police Department. <coughs> Benjamin Allen Stanger, Madison County Sheriff's Office.
God, I stand before you again today, humble and respectful. We could not have done it this without you, Father God, in this prestigious organization. We would like to thank all the instructors and staff who played a significant role in our journey and becoming highly motivated, truly dedicated law enforcement officers. Holy Spirit, we ask that you give us guidance and patience to serve our department mission. Father God, we pray that you will lead us on a path of righteousness to be performance driven. Help us to attain professionalism on and off the job. And to never forget the officer safety values. In closing, let everyone remember this prayer. Lord God, I pray for your protection. As I began this day, you are my hiding place, in and under your wings. I can always find refuge. Protect me from trouble wherever I go, and keep evil from me no matter where I am. I will look to you as my protector, the one who fights for me every day. Your love and faithfulness, along with goodness and mercy, surround me daily so I will not fear whatever may come against me. My trust is in you, God, and I give thanks to you for your love and protection. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Have a blessed day. Let's give that one more round of applause.
Shella, you need to start this. Okay. I'll take no glasses off. All right. All right, oh, baby. I'm ready to eat in them. I know, right? Yeah. My daughter. Johnson. Bye. I'm going to take it off this one. 
Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let me get y'all. Uh, hold on. Yeah. All right. All right, I got you. She be telling everybody that don't see y'all. Uh, I, I saw in contact. I okay. got you. Definitely, y'all need it. Ooh, y'all got some some lifetime contacts, right? Yep. All right. You gonna say all you good about it? Yep. You say you gotta get some off the bed, though, right? Yeah. Trying to make sure I say bye to everybody. I did. I said bye to everybody. I don't know where we're going to get that. All right, y'all. Congratulations again. Hey, good, good meeting you, brother. Hey, yeah, nice meeting you. Okay, you take care too. Hey, congratulations. Thank you. 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 Right, where your kid, right? I like the car. Oh, Shelly, you are always good. Bye, Millinder. It's on location. Hey, oh, you I'm... need to come work for uh, the Oakland Police Department. <laughs> well, 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 congratulations. Congratulations. All right. So where's he going to be at? We'll be in contact. We'll be in contact. Now, where's he at? He's a you follow. Oh, you follow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's open. I just need to put these with my other people. Oh, bad for both. Uh, oh, Frank, I, could, I knew. Shella, will you be, I knew. We'll get that thing Frank, no paper, y'all. No no like like what's up? What's up, you guys? It's your girl Shella and Frank. Come on over and check out our channel, Promo SDK Reality TV, husband and wife. Well, we eat good in the neighborhood. We're a mukbang eating show, cooking and recipes, especially soul food, pranks on Frank. Oh, y'all go check it out. Challenges, vlogs, comedy skits, short videos, and TikTok. So come on and become our oh yeah baby today. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us on Instagram. Promo SDK, Promo SDK, or you can also go to any of our social sites and find us under Promo STK. Oh yeah, baby. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to meet you. So come on over.